All right, so we just finished installing the tail tidy here. Looks really, really good. And the next thing we're gonna do is a uh, little performance part here, the Woodcraft GP shift kit. So I have all the parts laid out here. Um, everything is gonna be pretty basic to in install. The directions are really, really good in this kit. If you're looking to buy it, check the link below and you'll get a link to this. And we're gonna get going on installing this. First thing that we're gonna do is actually remove the old shifter. Um, so that's gonna be a six millimeter socket right here. And we're gonna go ahead and just break this free, not super tight. And there's actually a nut back here. So this is gonna be a 13 millimeter holding the back. And we're just gonna unbolt it here. There's gonna be a washer behind there and the nut. And this is gonna come off. So we're gonna put all the old stuff off to the side. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna loosen the connecting rod up. We'll hold it with one hand and break the nut free. And then this will just unscrew. All right. So there's our old parts. I like to take everything and kind of put it back together. So that way things are in order. The first thing that we're gonna do, um, according to the directions, is we're gonna just assemble the foot peg. This comes as, uh, has multiple settings of where you can put it. So you can put it at uh, 12 o'clock, six o'clock, two o'clock, four o'clock. Um, we're gonna set ours up at, at in, with the pin in the six o'clock position. So we're gonna just set that like this. Allen is gonna be a four millimeter head. So we're gonna put that on there. We're also gonna use some Loctite on this. So just a little bit of Loctite and we'll just hold it and go ahead and just tighten it in there. So the next step is gonna to be to attach this to the pivot. Again, we're gonna do the kind of the same process here and the directions don't call for Loctite. However, I'm gonna just put one little drop of Loctite on here just so that these bolts don't come out and you lose the pieces. Um, so we're just gonna use just a little bit. You can see right there at the tip. That way, if you need to pull it out, you can still get it out. And we're gonna kind of set this in there loosely. So we're just gonna go ahead and tighten these up. Now we've got our assembly together. Basically pretty easy from here. What we're gonna do next is we are gonna actually set up our pivot bolt. So in the directions, it actually wants you to use a little bit of grease. So we're gonna just put a little bit of grease here on the pivot. It also says a little bit of grease here on the washer. Now, what we're gonna do next is the wave washer. It's wavy, so it's called a wave washer. That's gonna sit on here, just like that. So that's gonna be the first piece you put on. Then we're gonna slide it through. To center this bolt, we're gonna put this bushing into here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let the nut and the bolt kind of do the work when we're putting it in, but we're just gonna kind of set it in there and we're gonna do just give it a couple light taps with the hammer. And just set that in there. So it's flush on both sides. The last thing, we're gonna take this, we're gonna take our nut behind. We're gonna double check our nut size before we put it in there. It's gonna be a 13 millimeter. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna set this up and we're just gonna get it started. And the reason why I say that is because I'd like to get everything set up first before we start tightening everything down. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to attach the connecting rod here. To do that, we're actually gonna pull this linkage off. So the linkage will actually stay the same direction. However, the angle of it is gonna change just a little bit. So you they said they wanted at 90 degrees. So we're, we are gonna change it just a little bit. This is gonna be a five millimeter here and we're just gonna loosen up the bolt here. And then we're gonna take our shaft and this is only gonna go one way because one side's gonna be a reverse thread. As you tighten this in to one side, it's gonna tighten itself into the other side. So that's just gonna screw in and that's gonna bring your shifters closer together. So now before we do that, we're gonna to wanna to see what's comfortable for the rider. 
So whoever, whether it's yourself or you're installing this for somebody else, you want to know how high they want their their foot when they're actually shifting. So we've got our rod in here. As I mentioned, you're going to twist it in. And as this side pulls up, this side's going to pull in. Like I said, you're going to get it to where the rider's comfortable. You can have it raised up. You can push it down, depending on how aggressive their style is. And the last thing is that the linkage right here needs to be lined up at a 90 degree angle. So you have this and then down. So we're right at about a 90 degree angle right here. So the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our um, bolt and we're gonna lock the linkage back in there. And then we're gonna tighten that up. And then when we're done tightening this, we're gonna go ahead and just tighten up those two 10 millimeter lock nuts so that that doesn't move. All right, so we're gonna snug this up. No need to over tighten anything on a motorcycle. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna tighten this. This feels comfortable for William. So we're gonna run it like that. So we're gonna tighten this up and it just needs to be snug. Don't over tighten it. And the last thing we're not gonna forget to do is tighten down the main bolt here. So this is also gonna be a five. And we said there's a 13 back underneath. We're gonna get the kickstand out of the way. And we're just gonna go ahead and start tightening this in. And this has a nylon lock nut on the back. So it doesn't need Loctite and it should stay in there pretty good. And there we're all set. See, the quality is really good. You are gonna have a little bit of side to side play. That's just because of the, the wave washer that's in there. But you can see the quality of everything is really good. Nothing's jiggly. The bolts are tight, the seats are tight and all of that. A few moments later. We got our GP shift kit installed here. The last thing we wanna do is we're gonna just take off these, these passenger pegs. We don't need to, but I'm doing it because I want to. Yeah, well, it's gonna look a lot better as a- as Save a some weight as well. So basically six millimeter socket, and we're just gonna go ahead and make sure it's in there tight. We're just gonna break these free with the ratchet, and then I'm gonna come back to the other side. And as we're taking this one out, we're gonna make sure to hold the bracket with one hand so that we don't drop it, so. Holy shit, that looks beautiful. Looks like a race bike. Yep. Thanks for watching today. This again, this is I'm Brent with Wide Open Moto here in San Diego. Um, we repair pretty much every kind of bike. Definitely parts installs are something that we're really great at here. So we got our tail tidy in here. Looks really, really good on this bike. Uh, we got rid of the passenger pegs, cleans up the tail end so much, and the GP shift kit. This was pretty easy. I think we spent, with the filming and everything, a little over an hour. Um, but these are very easy, simple mods to make your bike look way better. I always suggest, even if you don't have an, uh, uh, an RSV, if you're riding a Ninja or an R1 or, or any of the, the Jixer, doing the tail tidy is an absolute must. Getting rid of the big bulky tails that, that manufacturers put on the bike for the, for the little amount of cost can make your bike look so much cleaner.